Okay, let's start today's uh, session and we will start with the talk of, uh, by Tony Panchak from UPenn and the title, as you can see, is the Push Forward Theorem and Applications. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, this uh, joint work uh, in progress with uh, Dima Rinkin and Bertrand Toen, where we are trying to understand the symplectic structures relatively uh, on families of spaces uh, which vary uh, with parameters which are in a topological uh, space. Uh, so we have some sheets of uh, 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 spaces which typically are going to be moduli spaces or moduli stacks, and we are trying to understand what, what would it mean to have a symplectic structure along the fibers of those sheets. Um, and to construct such structures uh, and use them uh, in some meaningful way. And I'm going to show you there are various applications one can do. Uh, in particular, there are interesting applications to topological Fukai categories. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about those applications. I'm going to show you uh, a different set of applications about uh, uh, <laughs> constructing uh, Poisson and symplectic structures on the moduli as stock state. Uh, on a smooth variety <coughs> of the complex numbers. Uh, and um, so, so somehow the talk has uh, uh, two parts. One is uh, uh, some, some general theory, uh, uh, which uh, 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 gives you a way of thinking of symplectic structures relatively and uh, tells you how to construct them. And the other is trying to use this deep machinery and do computations and get some interesting examples. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit heavy on, 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 on details, so I've tried to, to trim it down, but it's still a lot of stuff, so we'll see. Uh, okay, so here's the problem. Uh, what I want to do is I want to start with uh, sheet f over oops <coughs> sheet f over the topological space s and i one thing i want to know about the sheet is i want to know that the fibers are some kind of geometric object so they are going to be for me stacks uh, or in fact derived stacks um, and i want to understand what it means uh, 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 for such a sheet to 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 have uh, a symplectic structure on each fiber and uh, so for this to make sense, uh, you need the sections of your shift to be geometric too. So you need them to not just be stacks or derived stacks, but you not need them to be algebraic stacks or analytic stacks. Something uh, uh, that has reasonable geometry. Uh, and the other thing you need uh, is uh, uh, when you're specifying a relative form, uh, so there will be, will be two pieces of data, <coughs> the, the closeness data for the form, uh, uh, but you also want to specify a non-degeneracy condition for the form. And now, because we're dealing with the sheaf uh, uh, whose stocks can jump from point to point, uh, um, the, 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 the non-degeneracy condition cannot be naive. It cannot just say, oh, my Sheet has the property that my, my form has the property that on each stock it's it's non-degenerate. Uh, what will have to what it will have to do it will have to involve some kind of duality on the base, uh, 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 which parameterizes the stocks of your sheet, and uh, so it has to be some 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 uh, uh, reasonable uh, topological duality for sheets of vector spaces on the base, and of course you know the, the most natural one will be the edge duality. Yeah. Well, there will be an example. There will be many examples, but <coughs> yeah, there will. Be. Just, just be <coughs> Okay. Um, so let me just recap this. I've, I've talked about in fact, in this conference many times about symplectic structures. Uh, I don't don't want to spend time on that. If you haven't seen it, you're not going to get it anyway uh, from the first uh, pass. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, maybe you'll get some, some uh, idea uh, uh, of, of what's behind it. 
so what are we talking about? So say that we have a, 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 a geometric object, which I'm calling F here. Uh, so it's a, an algebraic stack or, or space, uh, which also has some interesting function theory. So it has uh, differential graded algebra functions. The functions have this extra neopotence that sit in different homological degrees. The reason you care about those things is because they actually come to you naturally as solutions to moduli problems. And also, very often, if not always, if you do it correctly, actually resolve singularities of moduli problems. So you need to keep these guys as part of the data so that you are uh, not dealing with singular spaces. And, uh, uh, um, and once you have them, you can ask what a, 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 what a closed form on such a guy is. And um, <clears throat> you get a little bit of extra complexity here because, so there is a complex of closed p-forms, algebraic closed p-forms on such an f. Um, and that complex uh, has some additional complexity because you know f uh, has some stackiness in it and some derived structure. So in particular, it's um, infinitesimal theory, it's tangent space. Uh, it's not really a sheaf, but it's a complex. Uh, and that complex, so, so the smoothness that I was alluding to is, is just saying that that complex is a complex of vector bundles locally, um, and um, a finite complex of vector bundles locally. Um, uh, but because we have this, this internal differential in the tangent complex, and you also have the run differential on forms, the, the the forms on this space are really a double complex, and these uh, uh, closed p-forms are just co-cycles in the total complex of this double complex. Um, and so, uh, formally, when you write it down, what you really need to do is you need to take the, the pit step of the Hodge filtration, so this is the second bullet point, you need to take the pit step of the Hodge filtration uh, in the um, Deram uh, uh, algebra, for the cotangent complex of this F and uh, take the total complex but with respect to the product. So these are infinite double complexes, so you need to complete uh, when you're totalizing. And so a, 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 a co-cycle uh, in, in, in this complex, say, say if we do form degree two, a co-cycle in the complex of uh, uh, close two forms, uh, uh, is going to be a, a close two form, and uh, because we are dealing with the complex, you actually can take a cycle in any homological degree, so you can shift that complex by n, and you can take an n shifted uh, uh, two form, which is just a degree n cycle in this complex. And if you have such an n shifted form, uh, close two form, so, so uh, you can contract uh, the tangent complex with it. And that's going to send you to the cotangent complex, because it's a two-form. It's going to send you to the cotangent complex shifted by n. And uh, you can call the form non-degenerate if that contraction is uh, quasi-isomorphism. So that leads you, gives you the notion of a shifted uh, 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 closed non-degenerate two-form. So, so gives rise to this shifted symplectic geometry. So these are the guys that we're interested in. And of course, if, if your derived artin stack is just a space, smooth space, then the tangent complex is just a vector bundle, and this is just an ordinary algebraic symplectic form. But uh, uh, if it's not a space, then, then you get this extra fuzzy. Um, OK, and uh, let me just say there is a, a so this, this type of symplectic geometry it comes with the full package of, of what you know and understand in ordinary symplectic geometry. So if you have any map of derived stacks, uh, you can talk about, and the target is symplectic, uh, you can talk about isotropic structures being specified on the map. Uh, uh, so, so if the target is an n plus one shifted symplectic uh, guy, an isotropic structure will be a uh, way to trivialize that n plus one shifted symplectic guy when you pull it back to f. And because, again, we are dealing with a space of forms or a, or a complex of forms, trivializing means you need to specify a homotopy. So it means that you pull back the n plus 1 uh, cycle uh, in the complex of 
those two forms, and you want the homotopy between that co-cycle and zero uh, on the source. That's an isotropic structure. And then you can talk about non-degeneracy of such isotropic structures. An isotropic structure is Lagrangian if when you contract the relative uh, tangent complex for the map, uh, uh, so that's like the normal bundle for the map, uh, then you get the cotangent complex for the source shifted by f. And uh, so there is, a, uh, there is an interesting feature that, that appears here, uh, uh, um, which is that uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit, these non-degeneracy conditions, they, they are interchangeable. Uh, uh, so Lagrangian and symplectic structures in this shifted world are really the same thing uh, if you put them in the right context. So you can start and develop the full theory just by talking with, about Lagrangian structures uh, without mentioning non-degeneracy of symplectic forms, or you can do it the other way around. Uh, so this is this comment here, that if you have an n-shifted Lagrangian structure for a map from a stack to a point, you know, the point has only one symplectic structure, which is the form zero, but you can put it in any homological degree. And uh, if putting a Lagrangian structure on the map to the point is the same as putting a symplectic structure on the source. These are just the same uh, two pieces of data. And another thing that, that's worth mentioning, if you haven't seen this, maybe it will give you some sense of what's going on. So this, this derived stacks, as I said, they have tangent complexes, which are complexes of vector bundles. And these tangent complexes, they have pieces of uh, homological shifts, shifts, homology shifts that sit in different degrees. They could be positive degrees, negative degrees, degree zero. Um, and uh, uh, the stackiness, of, of the underlying geometric object uh, uh, is encoded, so the, the infinitesimal theory of the stackiness is encoded in the positive degree homological guys, and uh, the neopotence, the, 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 the derived structure is encoded in the negative degree homological guys uh, in the cotangent complex. And what the symplectic structure, if you have a symplectic structure and you have this extra first that you need to resolve singularities, the symplectic structure actually exchanges those two. So you really need these extra pieces uh, if you want to understand what seems like the <coughs> okay, so this is my crash course on shifted symplectic geometry. So now uh, I'm gonna, ah, maybe examples. Uh, 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 these are really the cheap examples that you get without any thought, but they're useful. So if you have a reductive complex uh, algebraic group and a non-degenerate uh, uh, invariant quadratic form on the real algebra, uh, that gives you a two-shifted symplectic form on the classifying stack of the group. Because the classifying stack of the group has a cotangent complex, uh, which is the view of the real algebra placed in homological degree one. Uh, and uh, uh, so this wedge product is really the symmetric product of the dual of the real algebra. When you shift it by two, it's literally the symmetric product. So this gives you, the, 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 the killing form actually gives you uh, a clause two form, and it's very easy to check that non-degeneracy of the killing form is exactly the non-degeneracy condition of that clause two form. So choosing killing forms uh, on reductive free algebras is the same as choosing uh, uh, two shifted symplectic forms on the classifying stack of the group. So this gives you some collection of examples, uh, and uh, also you can get cheap examples by just taking cotangent uh, uh, bundles of, say, smooth schemes, uh, and then putting the fiber of the cotangent bundle in homological degrees uh, minus n. Uh, and then the, the tautological symplectic form on, on that uh, stack or derived space, depending on the sign of n, uh, will be uh, an n-shifted symplectic form. So these are somehow, uh, 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 <coughs> as I said, you know, examples that you get by uh, by just taking the definition and looking at the simplest possible way to, to implement. Um, now, what I want to do, as I explained, was I wanted to take a sheet over topological space of uh, stacks. And uh, I want to understand 
how to specify a closed to form or closed form along the fibers and then how to state that that form is non-degenerate, relative. And you can actually do it with arbitrary sheaves on a topological space uh, uh, of stacks uh, as long as the space is locally compact. The whole theory works, uh, and in fact in the paper we are writing we do both, uh, we do the general theory uh, um, and we do the specific theory. The problem is that if you do it with arbitrary sheaves on locally compact topological spaces, uh, you cannot compute anything. So if you want to compute things, you have to restrict the type of spaces and the type of sheaves, and uh, the so-called the best universe in which you can do many, many constructions and computations is if you look at constructible sheaves of stars on stratified spaces. So that's what I'm going to explain. Uh, <clears throat> so, the good thing about constructible shifts is that at the end of the day, they're they're, I mean, once you fix the stratification, uh, you know, so these are locally constant shifts of stacks on a stratified space, locally constant on the strata, uh, and at the end of the day, if you, if you try to understand the constructible shift, it's understood in terms of some combinatorial data. Uh, so, uh, so before I talk about the constructible shifts, the, the thing on the background that you really work with are diagrams of stacks. Uh, um, uh, uh, so this will be the, the hidden combinatorics that describes the constructible data. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start with an indexing category, which, I mean, in, in general, it's a finitely presentable infinity category, but in all the examples will be just a, a partially ordered finite set. Uh, <coughs> uh, so that's in the examples, as you'll see, this will be the, the labeling set of our strata for the certification. Uh, and I want to look at diagrams of objects in some category, C, uh, that are labeled by my uh, indexing finitely presentable inclusion. So this will be just functors. Uh, so diagrams of shape I in C will be just functors from I to C. So collections of objects in C and then arrows that are given by uh, the arrows in I. Uh, and I'm assuming that the, the, the category I'm working with has finite limits. So in particular, I can look at global sections of a diagram. It will be just the limit of all the objects in the diagram. Now, because I want to do forms, there is a little bit of uh, homological yoga here. Uh, you, you cannot really label uh, your form data by the original diagram. If you start with a diagram of spaces or stacks or something like that, and you want to understand the forms on that, because the, the forms behave contravariantly, while the, while the space behaves covariantly, you have to keep both, both directions in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the labeling set. So the way to do that, in, it's, it's well understood in homological algebra, you need to take the category of twisted arrows in your labeling category. So uh, the category of twisted arrows, if you can see it, it's, it's something very simple. So the objects are just the maps in I, and the homomorphisms between two maps are like, it, it really looks like a category of maps in the category I. The homomorphisms between two maps are commutative diagrams, but the uh, 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 direction of the top arrow in the commutative diagram on the source is reversed. So they go forward on the bottom on the target and go backward on the sources. Um, and this thing is composed in all this way. Um, and so if you have the category, so if you take the category and you take the category of twisted arrows, of course you have a target and source uh, 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 functors to, to the category I and to the opposite category. And um, now you can use that to actually construct forms. And uh, it's actually a little bit useful to use the, the full flexibility of the theory. So I'm going to look at not just forms on, on the diagram of spaces I'm dealing with, but I'm going to look at forms with coefficients in some prescribed complexes of vector bundles. So uh, I'm going to look, fix, uh, a diagram of complexes of vector bundles labeled by I and a diagram of stacks labeled by I. And then I get a functor of forms uh, which takes a twisted arrow uh, and sends it to the P forms 
on the stack labeled by the source of the arrow with coefficients in the complex of vector spaces labeled by the type. And the actual complex of p-forms is going to be the limit of all those guys over the twisted arrows. And, um, and so this gives you a good theory. This, 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 this has pullbacks, it's push forwards, it's, it's, it behaves really uh, well. So the space of closed forms uh, is going to be just the, the topological realization of the dot Khan uh, uh, construction on this complex. <coughs> And uh, uh, you can think about uh, a closed p-form on the diagram of stacks or spaces F with values in the complex diagram of complexes E as just the, 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 a connected component in this topological realization or as a degree zero procycle of homology class in this complex. And you have a global section factor uh, which takes the complex and uh, maps it to the uh, closed p-forms on the limit of the diagram of spaces with coefficients in the limit of the, uh, uh, the global sections of the complex, of the diagram of complexes. Now, uh, to explain how this, this gives you uh, a, a good notion of forms on, on constructible sheets of stacks, uh, um, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about cost specialization. Uh, so the, the key to understanding constructible sheets of stacks in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, diagrams is to use the, 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 the command. Um, so let, let me just recall the, the, the standard command for topological spaces. So if you have a nice topological space, uh, X and a closed subspace Z and then a complementary open U, and you have any, uh, 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 any nice uh, uh, value category, uh, and now I'm going to assume it has pot limits and core limits, um, then a shift on X uh, with values in C uh, can be assembled completely out of uh, a piece which is a shift on the closed and a piece which is a shift on the open. So the way it works is you take a shift on X with values in C, you can pull it, restrict it to the, to the close, you can restrict it to the open, so you get two of those guys, uh, and then use the unit of the junction uh, uh, between the pullback and the push forward for the open immersion, uh, uh, and you get a cost specialization map, a gluing map from the restriction of the shift on the close to the restriction of the shift on the open, extended uh, a pullback extended by uh, zero to the whole thing and then pull back to, uh, 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 to the clause. And knowing this cost so knowing the, the shift on the open, the shift on the clause, and the cost specialization map actually gives you uh, uh, the original shift uniquely. So there is an equivalence of infinity categories uh, uh, which uh, says that the cone of this functor, so the lax op limit of the functor from shifts on the open to shifts on the clause, uh, uh, is exactly the shifts on the whole thing. So this is what you use to, to reduce constructible shifts of stacks or objects in some reasonable category to, to, to combinatorial data. You can apply this to the strata in a stratification. And it will give you the description of the shifts of stacks and it will also give you the description of the forms. Um, so suppose that we have a good stratified space, uh, and I'm not going to explain what good is. So these yellow things are, if you click on them, actually there's an explanation. You can go look at the slides. Um, so suppose that you have a nicely stratified space, um, and um, uh, you have a i is going to be the finite partially ordered set that labels the strata of x. So, being good will mean, in particular, that the stratification is finite. Uh, um, and, um, and then for each alpha in I, X alpha will be the stratum labeled by X alpha. Uh, and now you can look at shifts, say, of uh, topological spaces or simplicial sets, uh, which are constructible for the given stratification. So locally constant shifts of, of simplicial sets on each stratum. 
Um, so for each stratum, you have the restriction of f on x alpha, so it's a locally constant shift, uh, but also constructed of shift. And uh, now you have uh, nearby cycles for such shifts, uh, uh, which are nearby each stratum. Um, so if you fix a stratum and a shift, then you can choose any closed subset uh, which contains the stratum as an all. So for instance, you can take the closure of the stratum. And you can take the complementary open. You can take the nearby cycles for your sheaf uh, 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 for that uh, uh, open close uh, uh, recommand and restrict it to the stratum. Then you get a cost specialization map, which is the restriction of the cost specialization map for the <laughs> open close recommand. Uh, and uh, uh, um, and um, a very easy, uh, 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 <coughs> you know, just staring at this definition for a moment tells you that uh, our argument tells you that this does not depend on the choice of z. It only depends on the stratum, uh, um, and uh, um, so you get this well-defined sheaf of nearby cycles uh, or cycles of f uh, nearby by f of the stratum, and you get the cost specialization map. Except that this cost specialization map. Is uh, is the one that that's coming from all the closures, right? So it's it's like integration of all standard cost specialization maps of points that are in the closure of the stratum. Um, but yeah, so for every con constructible sheaf, you get the value of the sheaf on the stratum. You also get the nearby fiber of the sheaf on the stratum, and you get the cost specialization map from the value of the sheaf on the stratum to the nearby side. And this data actually, again, combinatorially reconstructs the whole sheet. Um, so it makes sense, this all makes sense, not just for shifts of spaces, of topological spaces, but makes sense for shifts with values in any category that has finite limits. Um, so if you have a finite pulse set uh, labeling a, a, a certification, you can look at the category of exit paths for that certification. So uh, it's some infinity category of paths that start in a stratum and, and go to, to a stratum which gets this one in your closure. And if uh, the certification is good, then this category is finitely presentable. And you can define, in fact, so there is a, there is a little theorem uh, 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 which you can find in Jacob's uh, Topos theory book. Uh, um, uh, which says that uh, the constructible shifts of space, uh, spaces on X for the certification are just uh, diagrams of spaces labeled by this category of exit paths. And um, uh, so for any category with, with uh, 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 finite products, you can define uh, uh, now the constructible shifts with values in that category as diagrams uh, labeled by the category of exit paths, and those are the, 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 the I-shaped diagrams, and those are the C-valued constructible shifts. Um, so now let's start with one of those guys. You have all the standard uh, features a sheaf will have when it's a sheaf of spaces. So if you have a point in your stratified space, uh, you have all the paths emanating from that point, uh, uh, um, uh, and you have the zero path, so that gives you an object. Uh, the value of uh, the diagram on that object is the stock of the shift at x. You have global sections, which is the limit uh, uh, over all the uh, exit paths of the values of the diagram. You have an evaluation map from the global sections to the stock. Uh, and if you fix a stratum, uh, then uh, you can actually describe explicitly what it means to have a locally constant object on your stratum. The fundamental point of the stratum is actually a full subcategory uh, uh, of uh, the category of exit paths. It's just spanned by all objects ix where x runs over the stratum. And you can define the value of f uh, uh, on x as the restriction of f to that subcategory, uh, and then the fundamental groupoid actually acts naturally on it uh, and, and 
and that's what, uh, what the open constant guy is. And uh, you can also define nearby cycles, uh, so you can look at all paths that end uh, uh, in your stratum, uh, uh, or you can look at all paths that are non-contractible and end in your stratum. Uh, and uh, uh, the nearby cycles are uh, uh, just the extension of, of the values of your diagram on all paths are that, that end on your stratum and non-contractible, uh, and the map to all the paths that end on your stratum. So again, it's a purely combinatorial algebraic description. Uh, and you have these nearby cycles, guys, and you have the, the co-specialization map, uh, which is coming from the unit of the right kind of uh, So and, yeah, so I'm going to call this the shift nearby cycles and the co-specialization map. OK, so now we can talk about forms. If you have a nice stratified space with stra strata labeled by a poset, and some exit path category bolt I, and you choose a complex of vector spaces on that space, which is constructible, and a complex, and a, and a, a sheaf of, of uh, derived stacks, which is constructible, then you can define the complex of forms with values in E for the corresponding diagram, and call it uh, 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 the complex of forms for the sheaf. You can also simplify that, but it's not really important because we're going to be looking at forms for the whole sheet, so we can just take elements in that complex. You have a global section map from the complex of e valued p closed forms on the sheet, relative forms on the sheet, to the close, absolute closed p forms on the global sections of the sheet times uh, the, the cohomologies of your complex of vector spaces on the um, and uh, so coming back to F, the requirement that that has to be geometric, if F is a constructible sheaf of Artin stacks, and so they have to be derived Artin stacks, locally finite presentations, so that they behave like smooth guys, uh, then for any local section of the sheaf of Artin stacks, uh, I can look at the relative tangent complex. Uh, uh, it's going to be a complex of vector spaces locally defined on the stratified space X. Uh, and if I have a relative closed form on the sheet with values in a complex of vector spaces C, I can pull it back by this local section and I'll get a, 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 a skew symmetric uh, 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 pifold pairing on the pullback tangent complex with values in the complex of vector spaces E. And you can think about this as the value of the form on the section C. So now I can talk about, so this is what a clause uh, 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 form is, and clause forms have values, and now I can take this and explain what non-degeneracy means. So start with the stratified space, which is good, and I'm going to also assume that the strata are equidimensional so that I don't have to come and correct my combinatorial formulas the whole time. Um, and uh, take a constructible sheet of, uh, of nice geometric stacks. Uh, and I'm going to take the coefficients now to be not an arbitrary complex of vector spaces, but they're going to be the Verdier dualizing complex with some shift, which where the shift can be anything. So, it cannot be arbitrary, it has to be the dualizing complex, but it could be a shifted dualizing complex. And um, here's the definition. The complex and space of relative and shifted forms on the stack F uh, is going to be the complex of closed relative P forms on F with values in the dualizing complex shifted by F. And uh, in particular, a relative n shifted two form on the on the stack uh, is going to be a relative. So this is two. Uh, it's a relative n. It's a relative two form with values in the Verdier dualizing complex shifted by n. And it's symplectic if this value guy, the contraction with the, of the tangent, the pullback of the tangent complex, 
relative tangent complex by a section to the relative cotangent complex, mapping to the restriction of the dualizing complex to the open shifted by n, if this is a quasi-isomorphism for every section. So this, this codifies what I said, that we need to use duality on the base. So you cannot just naively say that uh, relative tangent complex pullback is dual to the relative cotangent complex because dual for complexes of vacuum space on the base means tensor with the dualizing sheet. So you need to keep this as part of the data. And as I promised, you can actually write everything combinatorially. So in particular, this non-degeneracy condition, which is the condition for all opens and all sections, uh, and it's kind of okay, it actually uh, has a finite incarnation. You can write it down explicitly in terms of combinatorial data. Once you describe your sheaf of spaces as a diagram of spaces and your form as a diagram of forms, you can say what it means for that diagram of forms to be non-degenerate. So what happens is that, so if you have a sheaf of spaces, constructible sheaf of derived stacks, and a diagram, and a, and a, and a relative uh, and shifted two form, calls two form, then uh, that form actually uses an absolute form, shifted closed form, on the nearby cycles on each stratum. It's absolute and it's shifted, uh, but it, it has a different shift, so this shift is coming from, from the fact that everything had values in the dualizing shift. Uh, uh, so it's, a, it's an absolute form with a shift of n plus one plus the dimension of the stratum. And not only that, but uh, it induces an isotropic structure on the co-specialization map from the value of the shift on the stratum to the nearby cycles. And the first theorem is that the relative two form on the constructible shift of stacks is symplectic, even only if for every stratum, this absolute two form on the nearby cycles is symplectic, and the co-specialization map is Lagrangian. So it's a thing that you need to check once for each stratum uh, for the combinatorial data that describes your shift. Right? The combinatorial data that describes your shift consists of all the values of the shifts on all the strata, all the nearby cycle values on all the strata, and all cross-specialization maps. So for this, these absolute forms do not glue? They glue, but they glue in this relative guy. I mean, so in fact, if you take these absolute forms, they are a little bit less data than the relative guy. But their non-degeneracy is, is uh, 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 it captures completely the, 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 the non-degeneracy of the relative guy. Can you use this theorem the other way around to put restrictions on possible stratification such that the ship becomes constructible? Like if you know already that. Say it again. Uh, I, I guess I'm saying that you're, you're describing a way to check. Mm -hmm. That's something you saw the general. Yeah, right. But uh, I was wondering if this can also be used the other way around. If I have a shift and I want to describe a uh, stratification according to which it's constructible, but I know already it's symplectic, this probably will put some restrictions on like how many strata the, the stratification has to have or what they must yeah, but you know, uh, I mean, you still need to be able to write uh, data for your shift. I mean, you know, if you start with an arbitrary shift of, uh, on a locally compact space, uh, you still need to be able to, to compute the nearby cycles for, uh, 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 for closed and opens. And then, of course, yeah, I mean, this will give you some restriction on the type of strata, but I don't know if you can actually do anything with it. It's possible. Um, okay, but push, the push forward theorem that, that was promised in my title. Uh, so here is the great thing about this. Uh, you can push forward. So you can get many new examples from examples that you understand. So if you have a stratified space of nicely stratified, stratified map between nicely stratified spaces, and you have a sheaf of uh, 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 stacks on the source, and a sheaf of vector spaces on the source, a complex of vector spaces, you can push forward the shift of stacks to get the shift of stacks on the target, and you can push forward the shift the, the complex of vector spaces to get the complex of vector spaces on the target. And again, in terms of diagrams, these are just very easy kind of extensions. Um, 
And if you have a relative form, oops, if you have a relative form uh, on, on the guy upstairs with values in E, then you can push it forward and you get the relative form on the push forward of the family of spaces with coefficients in the push forward in the family uh, uh, vector spaces. And the theorem is that this preserves non-degenerates, preserves simplicity. So if you take a proper map between stratified spaces and you take a non-degenerate two-form with coefficients in the dualizing sheet, you can push it forward and then you can use the trace map between the, uh, the dualizing complexes to get actually uh, 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 n shifted two form on the push forward family of stacks. And the claim is that if the guy upstairs is simplected, the guy downstairs is simplected. So this gives you, for instance, by passing to global sections, right? I mean, if x is proper, you can just take the map to a point. Yeah, the push forward is just taking global sections. This gives you ways to compute, to produce new symplectic forms from relative ones that you understand. And uh, let me just, I'm going to click on this one, to say that essentially all constructions that, that we know in shifted symplectic geometry are special cases in this theorem. Um, so if you do this for constant <coughs> So take a topological space, which is just, you view it as a stratified space with a single stratum. Uh, take, a shift of the, uh, take a derived stack and look at the constant shift with values, with, with fiber that derives stack. Then uh, take an absolute closed and shifted two form on your derived stack. You can interpret it as a relative form. Uh, uh, just have to remember that uh, 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 so, so it's a relative form with values in, uh, in, in the constant shift shifted by n uh, but the dualizing shift uh, uh, if x is an oriented manifold of pure dimension d the dualizing shift of that manifold will be the constant shift shifted by d so if you want to interpret it as a relative form on the shift but on the constant shift it's going to be a relative form shifted by n minus d and so omega x non-degenerate is an n-shifted absolute form on f if and only if omega x is non-degenerate as a relative n minus d form on f. And the push forward theory tells you that the trace of the global sections of this guy is an n minus d shifted symplectic structure on the global sections. And the global sections are just the mass from x to f. So this is this uh, 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 algebraic version of the AKAC formula which says that the mapping stack uh, from something which is oriented, which is Calabial, to something which is n shifted symplectic, is n minus d shifted symplectic. So it's just a special case of this push forward theorem applied to the constant. Um, you can say what a Lagrangian map is by using the push forward theorem. This is what uh, this chicken and egg I was mentioning that you can use one to define the other. So if you take your topological space to be the half-open interval uh, and stratified by the open interval as an open stratum and the uh, right end as the closed stratum, uh, then a uh, sheaf of stacks on this stratified space is just two stacks, one value, oops, one value at the closed stratum, one value at the open stratum, and a cost specialization map. So in fact, the value at the open stratum is also equal to the nearby cycle, so because there is no, nothing uh, uh, that contains this in the closure, in its closure, so, uh, so it's uh, just one cost specialization map from the closed to the open. The dualizing shift is the extension of the constant shift from the interior, shifted by one, uh, by zero, and then a relative uh, uh, N-shifted symplectic structure is what the Lagrangian structure for this map is. It's an N plus one shifted symplectic form on the interior and a Lagrangian structure for the map. Um, Lagrangian intersections are a special case. So if you take a closed interval and you stratify by the open and the two ends, um, then a, a, a constructible shift of stacks is specified now by three stacks two guys at the two ends and one in the interior, 
And there are two co-specialization maps, one going from the left end to the interior, the other going from the right end to the interior. The dualizing shift is still the extension of the by zero of the constant shift shifted by one from the interior. Uh, and an n shifted symplectic structure relative from this shift is an n plus one shifted symplectic structure in the interior, a Lagrangian structure for this map, a Lagrangian structure for this map. The push forward theorem, so if you take this guy and you push it forward to the point, tells you that the global sections are uh, n shifted symplectic, and that just means that if you look at the global sections, are just the uh, uh, the fiber product of these two Lagrangian maps, the Lagrangian intersection, it tells you that this is an n shifted symplectic structure. So this is the, the, the Lagrangian intersection construction that we had in our whole paper. It's again a special case. Hamiltonian reduction, being a Lagrangian intersection, is a special case of this theorem. So if you take a closed interval with the same stratification, if you fix a linear algebraic group and a core joint orbit, and any symplectic algebraic manifold with the Hamiltonian G action, then uh, a G equivariant moment map uh, uh, is just the statement, specifying a G equivariant moment map is just uh, 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 specifying a map from M mod G to G duo mod G. Uh, and uh, um, saying that this is a G equivalent moment map just says that this map is Lagrangian. So uh, a shift on this interval with various derived stacks you can concoct out of this data is at zero you put the co joint orbit module G, at one you put M module G, and in the interior you put G duo module G, which is really the cotangent bundle of BG shifted by one. So these natural maps from the co-joint orbit module G to G duo mod G or the moment map, they are Lagrangian. Uh, uh, and so this gives you a relative symplectic form. Um, uh, a relative zero shifted symplectic form. And the push forward theorem tells you that uh, 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 the trace of that is a zero shifted symplectic form on the uh, global sections. And the global sections are exactly the derived Hamiltonian reduction. You take the the derived fiber of the moment map of a quadrant orbit and quotient by G. So this is the, the Kirill Kostin Sura form uh, in this algebraic context. Mm -hmm. G is a finite dimension. G is a linear algebraic, finite dimensional linear algebraic. And you can also do quasi Hamiltonian reduction. Um, so, so this here you take the two sphere as a stratified space, and you stratify it by three strata the north and the south pole, and the, the complement, the cylinder. Uh, now take a reductive group, uh, it can be arbitrary, it has to be reductive, and take a conjugacy class. And suppose that we have an algebraic symplectic manifold equipped with a quasi Hamiltonian G action, so we have an equivariant group value moment map. And again we get a, a constructible shift of stacks, it's the conjugacy class mod G, the manifold mod G, and uh, on the interior we get BG. <coughs> and so, because on the interior we get BG, we need G to be reductive so that we have a symplectic form here. Uh, and so the maps, again, are Lagrangian, and uh, uh, the, the dualizing complex is the extension by zero from the cylinder of the constant shift shifted by two, and the standard two-shifted symplectic form on BG, given by the killing form, uh, extends to a natural relative zero shifted symplectic form of the whole thing, and uh, the push forward gives you the, the, the quasi Hamiltonian reduction, the derived quasi Hamiltonian reduction. So, all of this is to say that there is this theorem which, uh, uh, which you should think about uh, 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 some, some combinatorial generalization of quasi Hamiltonian reduction. Uh, 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 it's which symplectic forms can you assemble by taking symplectic forms on pieces and maps between them that happen to be Lagrangian and then taking fiber products and deeper fiber products and deeper fiber products. So this actually records all of this data. How are we doing this? Wow. So I'm going to talk about the Stokes data now, explain how this actually describes for you the Poisson structures on the moduli of Stokes data. In fact, in any dimension, but I'm not going to have time for a higher dimension, so I'm just going to do the, the, the case of curves. Um, 
um, and described as reflective links. So, the case of curves, suppose that X is a smooth topological surface, and we're going to think about it as, as, as something underlying uh, projective curve minus finding any points. Uh, um, and we're going to stratify it. Uh, it's going to have two on strata, an inner one and an outer one. The inner one will always be connected, the outer one may be disconnected. Uh, and then there will be one dimensional strata, which will be arcs, and they'll be labeled by some set E, and then there will be zero dimensional strata, which will be points, will be labeled by some set V. And uh, the certification has to be nice, tame, so two arcs meet exactly uh, 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 at one end point. Each arc separates the inner and the outer open strata, and the <laughs> outer open stratum retracts on the boundary. So this is the picture. Um, uh, so X is the surface. The inner stratum is this blue thing. The outer stratum are these yellow cylinders that go to near the punctures. The one-dimensional strata, so, so there are these circles here that separate the inner and the outer stratum. They're near the boundary. And we've broken them into uh, arcs by points. So these arcs are the, the red ones are the one-dimensional strata, and the, the green points are the zero-dimensional strata. And uh, so I'm going to look at special shifts of derived stacks uh, on, on, on this stratified space. Um, so there are constructible shifts of derived stacks, which are uniquely uh, described by, by, by properties, <coughs> by what their values and on, 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 on the various strata are and what the crystallization maps to. So for st the two-dimensional strata, for the inner and outer open stratum, I will require that the value of the shift on each stratum is the classifying stack of a reductive group G. And uh, uh, the groups will be different on the different strata, uh, 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 if you want to describe stock structures. But they're going to be reductive. And uh, on the arcs, on the one-dimensional strata, uh, uh, if you take an arc Xe and a point in that arc, uh, then the arc separates the inner stratum and the outer stratum. Uh, so the specialization of stratum, the fact that the arc is in the closure of X inner and the closure of X outer, gives you co-specialization of stacks. So it has to send whatever we put on the edge to whatever we've put on the inner stratum and whatever we've put on the outer stratum. And remember, on the inner stratum, I have put B of G, which is some reductive group. Uh, and uh, on the outer stratum, also B of some reductive group L. So the condition on the shift is that on the edge, I have to put B of P, where P is a parabolic in G, and L is the levy of that parabolic. Uh, <coughs> And the maps are induced by the inclusion of the parabolic in G and by the Levy portion. And for a point, you have specializations, you know, the point is in the closure of the, the two-dimensional strata, in the closure of two to one-dimensional strata. Uh, and so you have co-specializations from the stuff that sits at the point to the open guys and to the edges. And the requirement is so on the on the inner stratum we have BG, on the outer stratum we have B of a levy, uh, uh, on the one of the arcs we have B of a parabolic, on the other arc we have B of a parabolic, and at the point where the two arcs meet, you have to put P, B of the intersection of those two parabolics. Uh, so you see that there is one condition here that's, that's implicitly assumed, which is that the levy that we have on the outer stratum for the two arcs that meet at the point and separate the outer and the inner stratum, that levy is the same for the two parabolics. So the two parabolics that sit on this, uh, 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 so if you have you know, parabolics on each of each, these arcs, these parabolics that, that go all, all on this circle, they cannot be arbitrary. They're all parabolics with the same levy, with the levy that sits on this yellow. Okay, so 
this actually describes a constructible sheaf. Uh, it, the data that describes it is a bunch of parabolics for each neck, and uh, they are all parabolics with the same levy. And then uh, uh, that levy, uh, oops, that levy lives, that levy lives here on the neck, and you know it's it's a sheaf of levies which may be may or may not be constant. It's locally constant, but not necessarily constant because this thing is not simply to make. Um, and in fact, the shift of G's on the interior need not be constant. It could be only locally constant, but uh, uh, in most of the applications, we'll take it to be constant. But these guys here definitely may, will not be constant. Okay, and so here is the theorem. Uh, if you have such a shift, uh, uh, then the restriction map from uh, uh, the closed two forms with values in the uh, uh, idealizing shift for this stratified space to the closed two forms with values in the idealizing shift on the inner stratum, just on the blue guy, uh, it's a common topic equivalence. So choosing a relative closed two form here is the same as choosing a relative closed two form on this locally constant or constant shift. And if you take a form here and you extend it, if you take a form on the, on the interior and you extend it to a relative form of the whole thing, then non-degeneracy is preserved. If this guy is non-degenerate, then this guy is non-degenerate, and vice versa. Um, so this gives you a way of, of constructing non-degenerate forms uh, as long as on the inner guy. So, for example, if the inner guy is constant, it was BG, and BG has a, uh, has a shifted two form. And if it's locally constant, you need a shifted two form which is invariant under the fundamental topology. Um, so this, this gives you a way of, of constructing forms uh, if G is pretty because G is reductive. And, uh, and so, so you get uh, 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 you get a relative two form on this on this type of sheet. And the point is that such kind of shift actually controls stocks data for local systems on your so, um, if you have a smooth projective curve over C and you remove finitely many points and you fix irregular types for connections, G connections near the points, so these are like uh, Laurent tails uh, uh, for the poles of the connection uh, without the residue, with degree bigger than less than negative 2, less than or equal to negative 2. Uh, then uh, this actually determines uh, a delin Malgrand stock sheet. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, by, by this theorem of delin and Malgrange, uh, 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 stocks filtered local systems controlled by the, the parabolics that the delin Malgrand stock sheet gives you uh, classify exactly uh, local systems with stocks data of irregular type i, given by this Laurent theorem. So uh, the, 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 the global sections of, uh, of this the uh, uh, grand stock shift uh, on, on the surface with boundary that you get by blowing up the points uh, to reduce the boundary uh, uh, are exactly the, the stocks filtered local systems of the modular source data from this area. So it's a global section, so if you want to understand why this thing is, is Poisson or symplectic, you need a symplectic structure relative along the fibers of this guy, and this is what we were doing, the constructed one. And, um, oh wow. and so, 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 the point is that for any delin grand stock shift, so for any guy for which this relative form is defined, so the, for example, the, the, the group on the interior is constant and we've taken the killing form, uh, uh, then uh, we, we, we actually get uh, uh, a symplectic structure on the modular space. So if you take a delimo grand stock sheet of stacks, which is equipped with a relative two form, the way we constructed it, you can take your surface and map it to the half-closed interval. So it's a stratified map which collapses everything in the interior uh, to one and projects each cylinder, each next cylinder to the uh, open interval, zero, one. Uh, it's a proper stratified map 
And if you take the, the, the push forward of the relative symplectic form, you get the symplectic structure on, uh, uh, on the push forward start. And uh, if you analyze what you got, what you got really uh, 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 by, by writing the nearby cycles on the open stratum and, uh, uh, and the value on the open stratum, you got a, a Lagrangian structure of the sections of your Dillon Lagrange stock stack on the outer, on the cylinders. Uh, 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 so a symplectic structure here and a Lagrangian structure of the map from the interior. And uh, this is exactly the model I have stock stack. So uh, the, the geolocal systems uh, of stocks data of irregular type I are exactly these sections. And uh, uh, the local systems on the boundary uh, 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 with formal monodromy given by the, the uh, associated graded with the stocks filtration are exactly these guys. Uh, so we got a Lagrangian structure on this space, this is symplectic, this is Lagrangian, so that means that this guy is Poisson. So that's the standard statement that the module of Stokes data is Poisson, only now you don't need to do any quali qualifications. You don't need to take the Stokes data to be stable, you don't need to take the, the, the part of the module space to be smooth, it works for all Stokes data and it works for the whole module space. And because this is Lagrangian, if you fix the formal monodromy, so if you fix a Lagrangian here, which is conjugacy class of elements in, in, in the local system of Levis, uh, and you take the Lagrangian intersection, you'll get something symplectic. So that's a, the other standard statement uh, 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 of, say, Blau, and Yamakawa, saying that uh, moduli of Stokes data with fixed formal monodromy are symplectic at their smooth point. And uh, I'm going to shut up. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, this is sort of algebraic space. Everything is algebraic. If, if we want to, uh, to compare with a similar uh, symplectic step or Poisson step on the ground side, I need to extend to this. Well, yeah, so this is the better picture. I mean, you could, you could in principle, uh, uh, um, uh, talk about about the Durand version of that, we, we haven't done it because it's not as combinatorial as this one. Uh, uh, but there should be a Durand version and there should be a Hubert correspondence, uh, uh, but uh, it, it's not very much so far. I mean, there is a little bit of the Durand version that we did, um, uh, uh, but not in this generality with the push forward theorem. So in, in higher dimensions, uh, uh, we, we, Bertrand and I, we, 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 we worked out the uh, uh, the Poisson structures on the uh, 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 on the local systems on a on a non-compact smooth variety uh, in this language, and it's it's kind of tricky because you need to work with bunch of formal neighborhoods, uh, which you can only do non commutatively So um, it, 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 it's a different, slightly different theory. But uh, yeah, there should be some there are counterpart of that for sure. So, so can we pull back instead of push forward? You can pull back, but, but uh, you know, but pullbacks, are, because these are relatively symplectic guy, pullbacks are for free symplectic. That's not. So if I have this uh, relative symplectic structure for the total space of this uh, vibration, I can only assume that there is a symplectic Pullback the vibration, pullback the, the, the symplectic form, it will still stay relatively symplectic. No, no, not a staying relative to symplectic. I want to construct absolute symplectic structure from a relative form. No. On the, on the total no, space. no, because pulling back something relative is still relative. I mean, the thing that makes something relative absolute is passing to cohomology or global sections. Yeah. Pulling back doesn't make relative things disappear. Yeah, actually, this is for case of J, J uh, uh -huh. the data, one can have a different picture because. This this shifts the certain macro support you can move the curves for oriented curves. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is a general more general factor, you can see that any uh, weak mystification or any weak thing, uh, mm -hmm. oriented manifold, then a bit direct Poisson structure more in this case. Uh, if you can see the structural shift on oriented manifold, mm -hmm
and the one variable is on like considered uh, this is uh, single Lagrangian skeleton. It's infinity gets Lagrangian skeleton of one less dimension, and here you get relative to symmetric structure. Is it proof for any step of the object to uh, Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's part of a very general story. If you, if you go from any group to J, it belongs to <coughs> Yeah, I, I just didn't get the statement. No, what no, I it's a model stack of constructible shifts okay. of vector spaces and dimensional of mm -hmm. coherent feature stratification. Oh, no, no, I, I, no, I got the statement now. Yeah, okay. so you're doing the, yeah, so you're doing the, the, the non commutative version of what, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah, we haven't done that. Well, it's not the next thing, Tony again.